Okay, so we're on to the next part of this. Um, okay, let's just hide the cornea, and I'm going to hide the sclera. Um, and let's look at some texturing we're going to do here. Uh, actually, we're just even. Let's hide the iris. Okay, first one that's really easy to do. I just need to find myself a background picture of my retina. You can. Some people will just make this black, but I make it into a retina picture. So I'm just going to pause for a second. Okay, so I was just hunting around on. Uh, Google and I found a nice picture like this so I'm gonna take that and let's go over and uh, let's see if I go and I open up Photoshop and if I go into my downloads there's the retina picture there okay good enough uh, here I'm just gonna crop it and so actually you know what I should crop it a different way uh, how about we don't use this what if I go in here and I just go to image and I go to image canvas size image size canvas size and let's see it's thousand but 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 so let's make it so that it's uh, 1024 by 1024 and enter did it cut anything off that's interesting why did it make it so big what was I not paying attention to um, measuring in pixels this is pixels so it should actually canvas size should be cutting it down can you get a pause okay I don't know what just happened okay so I'm recording again I think I was recording and I didn't turn it off or on at some point anyway I'm saving it here in my source image folder on my iQuad project and it's called retina and I didn't underscore diff that's short for diffuse it's just another fancy word for color okay so it's saving it it should be fine I'm gonna make sure that it's not compressed and voila now we're back over here and let's just quickly throw on a material um, I guess for this one here I'll throw on the AI standard and I could even name this one quickly underscore MTL material retina material Great, and I'm just going to go here to color, and I'm going to hit it with a file texture, and I'll go browsing, and there's the retina diffuse, just like I said it was going to be. Um, one thing you might notice is a little bit dark. If I go back to the material here, you'll see, actually, the weight's at one. Hmm. I swear the other night I was noticing it was sitting at 0.8 or something like that, but anyway, it seems to be fine. Um, I might just go and take a look in the UV editor and see what it looks like. Put this on. Actually, it looks fairly fine. I might go and try and get it a bit more space in here, but it's not really too drastic or problematic, so we'll call it good. Here's part one. Okay, so the retina is done. Um, let's bring in that other piece of geometry. We've got the iris. <clears throat> and so the iris, um, I've already gone in and collected a little image here. Um, you can find these iris, iris photography uh, just by looking around uh, on Google um, and let's see where the hell did I put that I'm looking over on my other monitor right now uh, if I go down here source images I think there's the blue one okay let's just line that up so uh, I'm gonna open up the hypershade this time around uh, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna assign an AI standard Duke, done and uh, <clears throat> actually the color is at 0.8 this time around that's okay um, and if I want to bring in my texture I can you know uh, look, just drag it and drop it in there it is voila and um, I can just take this and middle click drag and connect it on my color and let's take a look at this again and um, here, if I go into my UV editor again, you can see that lines up kind of well, but the, the center is really off on this one. So let's go in here, and I'm going to grab um, let's grab this edge in the center. Come on. Nope, not that one. There we go. Let's grab the scale tool. Let's turn on my soft selection and see how much more of this iris we can get in there. Oh yeah. Okay, and it looks like I could play around with this and get some even better kind of effects on this. Um, how about when I do this, I'm going to turn off the soft selection now. 
Get that dark area in there. That's no one's not going to see that. They're going to see little bits of these notches here and there. Um, in reality, this is probably a little. I, I could get away with this being kind of thinner. I, yeah. You know what? I'm just thinking out loud. Okay, just keep going. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of the UVs on the whole thing, and then I'm going to hold down Shift. I'm going to right click. No, I'm going to hold down Control. I'm going to right click. I'm going to use Shrink Selection. That's going to leave the outside edges alone. And then I'm going to hit the unfold. And there, now it's even throughout the whole thing. Okay, or as even as it can be. <clears throat> so now we've got the iris taken care of. The UVs are lining up with this texture. And now, um, let's see, what are we at? Five minutes? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to pause while I start up ZBrush. Okay, so I got ZBrush started up. Um, I'm just going to get Buzz back here. Actually, I'm going to close down Photoshop. And I'm going to zip in here. And I want to grab this piece of geometry here. My iris. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully everything's all centered. I think it is. So it makes my life just a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to export this. And let's go in here and export. Uh, not as an FBX. I'm going to use the OBJ because they are more stable. And this is going to be my iris. Okay, great. And it's going into my scene project. Okay, great. Um, and I'm going to go over to ZBrush. I'm going to skip past all this stuff here. There's the light box, a little button. I can get rid of that. I'm going to go over to these tools here. Um, and the tools, if you click on, I'm going to grab the Poly Mesh 3D. And I click and I drag. Okay, and then I hit Edit. If you click and you drag and you bring in a bunch of these things, uh, switch. You'll see you get stuff like this. Control N clears it out, and then you can do one and hit edit. That means you can edit the object. It's kind of like a strange kind of creation zone that it, it gives you like creation parameters you can kind of play around with and stuff before you actually get into uh, sculpting and modeling. And this is the default one that you're supposed to use but it doesn't really matter you can use any of these primitives up in here stay away from these 2.5 d brushes it takes too much for me to explain at this point um, i'm going to go in and i'm going to hit import and let's see where am i my projects here and i'll find the i quad and if i go into the scenes folder that's where i put the iris obj and i'll open it Boop. there it is okay <clears throat> you can kind of see some hard edges on this um, next thing I want to do is I want to use that texture that I just lined up. So I'm going to go over here to texture and I'm going to hit import. And oh, you know what? I didn't put that freaking thing in the folder. One second. Copy. And I'm going to flip up here. Who am I? What am I doing? Flip over to, you can't see me do this, but just have to realize I'm sticking it in my source image folder. I drag it and I dropped it from another file. It's really a bad habit. Okay, there we go. And so when I come in here to source images, there it is. Okay, great. Um, so the texture is up here, okay, but I can't see it on here. If I want to get it on here, let me make this big. Um, if I go to texture map, I click on this I can put it on okay <clears throat> now um, I'm gonna take this piece of geometry and I'm gonna go to geometry and I'm gonna hit divide the hotkey is control D do it divide again this is putting me up to like 3,000 how about 12 49 we'll stop right at 49 I think that's lots if I put on the poly F here and you can kind of see how much geometry I've got in here. I've got a lot. Um, and I can use a number of brushes. Um, one brush I might be interested in is just the standard brush. With the standard brush, I can come in here. And if I hold down uh, control, I can mask out areas. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. How about I turn this off? It's kind of a dark color. Um, and I could find better ways to do this. But it, again, it makes it so I have to explain a lot. Um, what I'm going to do instead, let's just go over here and I'm going to grab this blue here and I'm going to take this and I'm going to hit make alpha. That puts it into the alpha section up here and desaturates it. And then, um, I'm just going to take that mask off of there. Um, and then once I've got it 
desaturated, um, I can also, I can start to pick it up in the displacement section down here. Okay, book. There it is. And <clears throat> um, I'm just going to do a little trick here. I'm going to go to layers. I'm going to hit create a layer. Uh, and then I'm going to go down here to this displacement and I'm going to go to the intensity and bring it up just a wee bit. A little bit goes a long way. 0.01. Okay, we go up a little bit more maybe. Uh, well, here's the thing. I can go up fairly high and I can hit apply dismap. Actually, it turned out not too bad. Um, it looks like I could have had a bit more geometry on there, but whatever, that's fine for now. But what it lets me do is this layer lets me kind of control it after I've done it, right, and see it interactively. You can't really do that otherwise. So I did this and kind of play around with it. If it was too much, I could bring it down. And then I bake it on. You don't want to keep these layers around. If, they start, if the layers are on there too much, it, it starts to slow down the system most likely. Okay, and so now... Um, if I turn my texture off over here, texture on, texture off, I can see what the iris is doing for me here. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit divide again. And that puts us up at 200,000. Let's go up to like eight. And now I can actually start taking this and I can use the sculpting brushes. Like I can use the standard brush. Oh, I got to turn these things off. Oh, it's starting to track on here. Let's turn it off. And I can start sculpting out. Um, I do tend to like uh, the clay buildup. There's a lot of brushes in here. Clay buildup is kind of fun, right? And you can kind of start to build up areas. And I probably should be using my stylus when I'm doing this because it's just so much easier. And you got, you know, like, I should be carrying the stylus wherever I go. Um, and then you can hold down shift and you can kind of smooth them out again. Just got to be aware of how, how many polys you've got on here. And it helps too if you have on the color texture, but I find that uh, as I'm doing this kind of demo-y thing of how I'm pulling this all off, you're going to get potentially a little bit lost. So I was trying to make it so it's kind of easy and you can kind of see what I'm doing. That's all. And I'm trying to avoid doing too many tricks at this stage of the game. It's all about just getting in here and playing around a little bit. So there's that one. That's working out kind of cool. And I can spend a bit of time here and sculpting, just kind of relaxing, putting on the new Iggy Pop album, right? And then everything will be cool. You can also check out, uh, if I zip over and I find something called the Damn Standard, the Damn Standard kind of gives you these nice little kind of creases as well. So you can kind of come back in here and uh, get some of these. And again, kind of using what you've just created from the displacement map that you projected on here or the displacement you projected on from the color map or dis diffuse map too many freaking terms okay anyway okay i gotta stop doing this because i can get into it <laughs> um now that you got something like this i could go up higher too you know i might go up to maybe the next one up is like three and a bit million maybe 12 12 that might be just crazy i don't think anyone's ever going to freaking notice a thing so three i call it the tops i typically notice if you go beyond 20 million um that things can start to slow down so what i want to do is i want to get this displacement map back over to my uh, and that's this will be the end of this video once i do it i'm just going to go to um this object and I'm going to go down to the lowest subdivision level in the geometry section. Okay, then I'm going to go into the displacement map here and I'm going to go create disk map. And this is making a displacement map for me. <clears throat> and then I'm going to export it. So let's create an export map. There's a couple different ways I can do all this stuff. This is kind of the one I find most people stumble into the most. I've got like a couple of other tricks up my sleeve. But this is what I'm going to be using. So here are scenes. Uh, I should probably put this thing into the source images. And this is going to be my iris underscore disp placement. And it says, would you like to take out the base mesh? In this case, no, we've got one. Nothing should have really changed, so we should be fine. Let's go back over here. I'm just going to go into the material attributes and just right clicking to get the attribute editor up. We've got the color on here. I'm going to go into uh, the Arnold standard surface here 
SG, the shader group, and there's the displacement material. I'm going to hook this up here. Again, there's multiple ways to do all this stuff, so I always have to be careful how much stuff I show. Uh, there's the iris disp. Pop this on. <clears throat> and we don't see anything right now, okay? So we're going to render. And so let's go in here. I'm going to go to Arnold. Actually, I'm making a, yeah, I'm recording a video while I'm doing this. So Arnold sucks for this. I always find uh, when I'm rendering and trying to record videos or doing Zoom classes or whatever, Arnold just sucks things up. So we'll see how this works. Um, let's go in here to Arnold. And actually, we should double check and make sure that I've got Arnold set on because yeah, I do. OK, good. So I've got a few different things going on. Let's go to render. Do I have to pause? No, looks like I do it. And it looks like my light here. I just need to crank up the exposure of my light. OK, and so we're hitting the bounding box problems here. So I'm just going to go over and grab. Uh, actually, I can grab it from here. I can go to the iris shape section. I can find Arnold. And right down. Uh, in the there's subdivision and there's displacement. The displacement, the bounds padding or the height. I suspect if I take the height and I put it to point one, I guess is to take the height map and bring it down a bit. The other one is to take the bounds padding and increase it. And that's working out pretty well. That was a really good guess. I might go here to subdivisions and crank this up on Cat Clark. Put it up to say three. Pretty smooth. And you can kind of see working and it's gonna get better over time like I did I hardly did anything to this and it actually looks kind of cool right now um, yeah the retinas uh, it's it's picking up too much on the retina because it's going like straight on on it but there we go um, and I might just take this and might do something like uh, look through selected and you can kind of look through the light as you're placing it and so I was in Arnold and I was rendering uh, right now it's rendering through the camera shape once. So I'm just going to go back to perspective shape. And you can actually go in here to window and you can put on 3D manipulation so you can actually render and or you can rotate and move your camera around here. And as I'm looking through this thing, this is my light here. Okay, so that should be good enough for now. Actually, I'll do one, was it 17 minute mark? Okay, I'm going to try and fit one more piece in here. Um, Let's stop this here. Stop that render. I'll do one more little thing and then I gotta take a break. Um, I'm gonna bring in the Sclera. Uh, and I'm just gonna hit H, brings it back. And I'm gonna take this and uh, let's put on an Arnold material. Duke. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go into the Arnold material and actually let's call this. Uh, underscore MTL. I didn't do that for the iris, but I'll clean that up later on. Um, and here I'm going to be going into the geometry section, and there's the opacity. I'm going to map that with uh, something called a ramp texture. Not a ramp shader, there's a ramp right here. Got a little rainbow on it. That's in the preset section. It used to have the rainbow, but now it's black and white. Okay. <clears throat> and let's put this here and this here and let's see what the hell we got. So if I go back to Arnold and I hit render, okay, it's turning out big and white. Let's hit uh, uh, three and it smooths it out. You go and find that clear material. There's the opacity. There's this. Now currently, um, if I bring this up, you'll see that it kind of becomes visible in the bottom. That's not going really from V range. This is circular. And let's bring this back this way. Let's bring this up. Bring this back. And we slowly reveal and I can actually at this point I'll probably start moving some stuff around realizing that I've got actually that worked out way too well. Bring this somewhere around here. Okay. <clears throat> and this is yeah you know, like I said I might figure out that uh, if I grab my iris this forward a little bit and kind of butt them up against each other and kind of get that nice little shadowy line right in there. Wonderful. 
And I'm still going to go in. Oh, you can see it kind of pop through here, so maybe I pulled it too far. There we go. Okay, so this is, oh, we're at 20 minute mark, this is the end of part two. I've got to make some textures and then I got to put some texture on the cornea itself. Actually, maybe one other thing I might want to do here while I'm on the iris, and there's the iris here. Iris underscore MTL. Um, I might want to bring down the uh, the specular. Either that or increase the noise so it isn't quite so shiny. Not increase the noise, increase the roughness. It isn't quite so shiny in here. That was looking kind of weird. Um, yeah, and that's it. I'm going to stop here.